Graphing trigonometric functions is a pretty important skill, right? It's especially going to be, it's going to become like doubly important in the next part of motion that we're looking at, which is called simple harmonic motion, where you basically take objects that move and their motion can be modeled with a trigonometric function like this or like sine. Okay, so you're going to get questions like, hey, graph this, and I want to just walk you quickly through what's the, what's the main skill that this is actually assessing and what would you actually do to approach this, right? So I'm going to go show you not one, not two, but three ways to do this really quickly, ways to model in your brain, and you check each of them off yourself. So you're like, okay, I have confirmation that I've done this correctly. So if they showed you this, and they said graph this in um, you know, normal domain, which is um, not to two pi, is what you're expecting, okay? By the way, even though you might be expecting that, in 95% of the case, that will be what you get, they can change this. What might be a common way to change it? What kinds of other ways have you seen in the exams you've been doing? You might go from negative pi, for instance, to pi. So you're going to get the same amount of the curve, but you're going to start over here. You're going to start some negative portion and then go not quite as far. Um, or they might go, go further, go to 4 pi, give me two copies of the whole graph. So do, do pay attention to this. It's not always the same. But in this case, what will we do? Okay. The first thing you need to remember is, please, 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 by this point, you need to have graphed enough trig functions that you have a basic idea of what a cosine curve looks like. I hope that image is like involuntarily leaping into your mind. If it's not, do yourself a favor and draw a really rough one on the side so you've got something to mentally compare to, just to reduce that, we call it cognitive load. Too many things in your brain, that's where silly mistakes happen, right? Like I'm trying to remember too many things in my head and manipulate it all, and then you get confused, okay? So if you've got this picture here, here's what regular cos looks like. And there are two modifications to it that you can see in the graph that I've given you, right? Uh, what does this three do? What does that do? This changes the amplitude, so normal, normal cos, normal cosine goes from negative 1 all the way up to 1. So if we sort of stretch it out vertically, this is not going to go from negative 1 to 1 anymore. It's going to go from negative, from negative 3 up to 3, right? So that's what would happen if this is what I were graphing, okay? So I'm just going to quickly think about what that looks like if I sort of said, okay, this is from negative 3 to 3. That's what it would look like if it was just y equals 3 cos x. But of course there's another change that's been made. This negative 2, what does that do? This is not a, this is not a scaling or a, sh uh, a stretching thing. It's a, it's a shift, right? Where's it gone? Down. Downwards 2 units. So instead of going from, <laughs> let's have our negatives in the right spot. Instead of going from negative 3 to 3, this negative 3 is now going to be negative 5, right? It's gone down. Two units, <coughs> excuse me. And this three is also going to go down two units to one. Is that okay? So that's actually where my new range is going to be. I don't care about these anymore. They were just to help me get a picture of what was happening. So from negative one all the way down to five, sorry, positive one, down to negative five, that's going to be my graph. And I'm going to put in all my relevant positions like so. Okay? Now, you're going to get graphs like these, and a lot of students will do that, and then we'll move on, okay? Please make this big enough. Firstly, a third of a page is the general rule, and I've, I've almost never seen a student draw a graph too big, but I've seen hundreds of students draw graphs that are too small. So please draw it bigger. It'll just help you to draw the features of the graph more accurately. But how do you confirm for yourself that this is true, right? If it's correct, you should be able to sort of look at it from a different angle and get the same thing, okay? When we had a look at this, what we did was we took regular cosine and we applied this 3, we stretched it, and then we applied the negative 2, we shifted it, shifted it down. Okay, now we did it in that order. There's no reason you have to. Okay, if I do it in a different order, I ought to get the same thing. So for instance, thinking back to regular cos, okay, if I think vertically, where is the middle of the graph vertically? The middle is zero, okay? In simple harmonic motion, we would call this the center of motion, all right? So if the middle's at zero, what does this negative two do? What effect does it have on the center of motion? It, just, like, just like we saw before, it's going to move down by two units. So instead of being up here at zero, it's going to go down one, down again, negative two, okay? But then you can say, now that I've dealt with this negative two, and the fact that it's sort of my through line right through the middle, now I can think about the amplitude. Well, this is now three, right? So I can go three above this. Where's that going to go? From negative two up to 
1, which is my confirmation of what I had before. And from negative 2, you can also go down 3 units to negative 5. Okay, so you've got the same range that you had before. Uh, you know, use your imagination, you get the idea. Okay, now one last thing just to confirm for you because sometimes you get asked the range, which is what I've been focusing on here. That's the main thing that's been changed. Sometimes you just get asked the range as a separate question, okay, before you've actually graphed it. Like part A, work out range. Part B, graph. Okay, so how would you do this? Well, you could just sort of use your logic the way that we've just done. That would be okay, you get the right answer. But if you want to rely on actually doing this on paper, here's what you could do. This is what you start with, right? And this 3 and this minus 2, despite the fact that they're all on the right hand side, we have just illustrated the fact that what they're really changing is not the x, but the y, right? There's no, there's no horizontal squeezing or stretching, there's no horizontal shift. These two numbers are really mucking about with this, okay? So I'm going to rearrange the equation to show that, right? To have this 2 in the correct spot, I'm going to, what operation will I do to both sides? I'm going to add 2 to both sides, that gives me this. And to pop that 3 in the right spot where it belongs, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That gives me this. So now that this looks like what I normally expect with a normal tree graph, right? And I know for this guy, I'm from negative 1 to 1, I can apply that same logic over here now that I've rearranged it appropriately. This object over here, the left hand side, should exist between negative 1 and 1. So you can do this just purely by algebra, right? Everything that you just told me, I can reverse to apply it to the range. Instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to multiply by 3, which gives me this. And then instead of adding 2, I'm going to subtract 2, which should give me this, just like I confirmed with my earlier graph. Okay, so what's nice about this is, is whichever way you go, you can see you've got the right answer and you can confirm that for yourself. You're like, have I got the right graph or not? We'll try it another way, even if it's just mentally or scratched on the side of your page so that you can confirm for yourself, yes, this is the right graph. Okay, does anyone have any questions on that? I just thought I would re-emphasize it because I only did this once in one of my lessons, so it's a while ago and this is going to be very relevant for this task. Okay. I'll leave it on the board just in case you do want to jot any of it down or snap a picture. Um, but whatever you do, please be careful with your domain and range for these tree graph questions. It's very commonly what students sort of get mucked up by. What about, um, what about x intercepts? Great question. So if you were asked to graph this, you would have to find what those values are, right? How are you going to do that in this question? How do you usually find x intercepts? You let y equal 0, okay? So you can see over here, I've actually done enough work to make this nice and neat for myself. Here, if I make y equal 0, it's nice and easy to just get, well, I've, let's use a different color and pop it down here. I'm going to get cos x equals 2 over 3 for my x-intercepts. That's when y equals 0. Now, 2 over 3, are you going to get nice exact values from that? No, they're going to be gross, right? So at this point, you know, I've got 2 pi over here. So I know I'm going to be supplying my answers in radians. Now, what would you actually do to get these? Well, you're going to need to roll your calculator out and find out what these are. They're not going to have nice, at least for you guys, not nice like, ooh, 3 pi on 2 or something like that. You're going to have to get a decimal value for your radians, okay? So you've got your calculator there probably mostly on your table. Get, get your calculator out, go ahead, get it out. And making sure that you're in radians, how would you get the angle that belongs to this? Cos x equals 2 thirds, what are you going to do? What operation can you apply to both sides? Come on, we left this topic. You're going to go inverse cos, right? So inverse cos of 2 thirds should give you a number. What is it? Zero point, sorry? Zero point eight four. Eight four dot 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 dot. Okay, now have a look. You've just done a graph. Does that seem like one of the answers that you're expecting? 0 0.84. Remember what 2 pi is, by the way. Two, like pi is just 3.14, etc. So this is about 6.28. Does 0 0.84 look like one of my answers? It does, right? I hope. It wasn't a very carefully drawn graph, but it sure looks all like this, right? Now that's good. That's one of the answers, but you've got two. How do I find the other one? Look at the symmetry of my graph and see if you can work it out. 
Yeah, see how this length is 0 0.84, right? And you can see visually, even on my pretty awful graph, that this length is also 0 0.84. So to get this value, you've got to start at 2 pi and subtract the value that's now sitting in your calculator display. And you should get, what, 5.4? 4 point? 5.44. 5 5.44, 5 thank you. Uh, I'm going to go back to orange. So, 5.44. Now, yeah, that's a bit gross. Uh, it's one of the side effects of using radians is that you do get these, um, these awkward numbers in here. But you can still do a sense check just like you normally would by remembering that the whole thing goes to 6.28 roughly, and so yeah, that looks pretty good to me, and there are your intercepts, okay?